today, a little bit of a discussion. You can't treat a spine effectively without checking a hip. And you can't treat a hip effectively without checking the spine. Because hip immobility, which may result in hip impingement, often comes from poor glute, especially glute max, into hip extension. And if your hip extension is poor, then you'll be making up for it at your lumbar spine with a lot of your activities. So what we're gonna be looking at in the videos ahead, demonstrating some tightness of the hip flexors, some weakness of the hip extenders, and the effect that it has upon the lumbar spine. So let's go to the videos. Here's a demonstration. You can't treat a hip or a spine in isolation. And here we see the psoas muscle. Now the psoas muscle comes from the spine and attaches to the femur. It crosses the hip. Now, the psoas is a hip flexor. So when we're sitting in hip flexion all day, you can actually move the hip joint itself, the femur, slightly forward. There's the femur joint there, there's the femur bone in the acetabulum. So tight hip flexors can actually translate the femur forward, and that's impingement. Now here's normal hip extension. Now in normal hip extension, you can see how the leg moves backwards and there's no flexion at work at the spine, no extra extension. So the glute has to enable us to perform hip extension. If the glute is weak, you'll end up making an accommodation at the spine. The spine will try and get extension for you. So as you can see, that when the glute max is contracting, it actually pulls the femoral head slightly backwards. That reduces hip impingement. So a good healthy glute helps us with hip extension and it helps clear up hip impingement. And this is a major reason that we really need to make sure we've got good strong glutes that are offsetting our daily postures that are continually in hip flexion all the time. Now, let's have a look at the spine itself. So if we've got an immobile hip not going into extension well, you're going to find some micro movements in the spine. Look at this mid lumbar area. See the extra little bit of movement there? That extra little bit of movement over time can add up to be quite an irritation of the disc. And of course, there's the extension of the spine trying to make up for an immobile hip. And that can cause aggravation of the facet joints at each side. So there's the facet joints. They can be irritated by the micro movements where the spine is trying to make up for immobility of the hip. You can't separate a hip from a spine.